Hello folks, I'm Dan, and um, we're starting another little project here. If this is your first time visiting and you find something useful here, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. But anyway, we're starting a new project today, or we're starting a new video series, and I'm going to approach this a little bit differently than I've done a lot of the videos I've done in the past. This I plan on releasing on a weekly basis, and what it is, is it's going to be a tool and cutter grinder. And this is a, a Quorn tool and cutter grinder. It's an English design that um, Professor Chaddock developed. And it was designed as a tool and cutter grinder that would do virtually everything that the home shop wanted it to do. Um, I've already built one of these. You know, I if you've followed my channel at all, why you've already seen... A few videos that I put out of it and use some things I plan on doing and some of the shortcomings of it. And what I'm going to do is we're going to scale this tool and cutter grinder up. And I've actually scaled it up 33% or a third. And I've got, oh, a good portion of the drawings done. It's one of those projects I've kind of been working on in the background when I haven't been able to work on other projects that I probably would have rather been working on, like the airplane. But Nonetheless, I normally have several projects going at once, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of prioritizing those, and this is one of those projects that I'm going to try and commit to releasing, you know, at least one video a week on a certain day, and I'm not sure what day that's going to be yet, but we're going to try and commit to that and keep it going. This is, a, this is going to be an ongoing project. It's not going to be a quick and dirty project. I'm not going to set limitations on the length of the video. I'm not going to break it down into a certain process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work along in a session and however far I get with it over one session or maybe a couple of sessions depending on what I get done, we're going to produce a video of that of that content and um, it'll be maybe a little bit dysfunctional I know because I'm going to jump from one thing to another. I've been working on the drawings right now and we've been developing patterns for it and I'm not going to do all of the patterns at once or all of the drawings at once, that type of thing, because a lot of the time it will depend on what materials I have available and it will depend on, I guess part of it is what I feel like working on at that particular time, whether it's going to be pattern making, casting, machining, drafting, whatever the case may be. Plus there's, I'm going to compartmentalize it into uh, like right now, the primary focus is going to be on the two base castings because everything is going to be built off of that and will build upward. Some assemblies will have to be built as an assembly and fitted. Some individual components will have to be built and fitted just to give a reference for what size the next component may be because there is going to be some variation since we're varying from, from the original plans. Once I get the bases done, things like the rotating base, the size of that will be dependent on the on the tilting bracket castings and, and some of the other castings that that attaches to. Things like the wheel head assembly, that's basically a individual component and once the main casting is machined to fit the vertical column, why then everything on that wheel head assembly within reason is one component. You know, if it's been scaled even close to what it's supposed to be, why everything's going to fit and work in relation to one another. So hopefully that'll make more sense as we progress with this build. But I thought I would uh, kind of give you an overview of this and we'll show you some of the drawings that I've got going. The next video will show starting to develop these base castings. I, uh, I probably won't have them completely finished and ready to cast in the next video, but we'll have them pretty well along and or at least the basic we'll have the basic shapes of them done and be able to do the the final fit and and uh, build up the draft and any any work we need to do to smooth those out and, and finish those castings and get them ready to uh, ready to cast so that's going to be the first uh, the first thing we do but let me move the camera around and let's look at some of these drawings and we can get a little bit of perspective as to size and how they're going to uh, how they're going to work in relation to the original drawings. Here's our original base castings and if we just take a just a rough scale and kind of measure what we've got our overall length of this and this is going to be the primary base the left hand end here um, it looks to be just under eight inches long from front to back and we're about 
though three and five eighths inches tall is what we originally show. Now, when we scale this up 33%, we think a third isn't going to be very big on that uh, on that size. And of course, this is the other end base casting. But anyway, this is a this is our replacement casting for it, or our grown-up casting. And it uh, it ends up being substantially bigger, which I think it's just a scale. Part of the shortcomings I see with the original design is. It works really well. They're finicky to set up, uh, and there is quite a steep learning curve because I'm still learning with mine after several years now. But nonetheless, one of the main limitations that I see is the availability of grinding wheels. And if you look, you can find grinding wheels that are appropriate for on it. But I have not found a real good ongoing source of relatively affordable wheels. And now in the home shop, a lot of people are using carbide. When this was built, everybody was primarily using high-speed steel, and that's the advantage. The advantage of high-speed steel is you can grind it in your own shop. In this day and age, we're using a lot more carbide, so primarily for carbide, we're using diamond wheels. There's some green wheel stuff, but primarily now we've gone to diamond wheels. And the availability of diamond wheels in a size suitable for this is, I don't know, almost non-existent, I think. I've got a diamond cup wheel that I intended to put on here. I've got an arbor built for it and I have run it on my original corn. I don't feel like the machine's big enough and has enough horsepower to really handle that diamond wheel. So that's one of the primary reasons for, for upscaling this. So anyway, lengthwise we went from, you know, seven inches, eight inches to about 11 inches and height wise, we went to almost five inches tall for the main base, and that scaled up 33%. So when you uh, when you see the castings as we develop them, I've actually shown my original patterns compared to the new patterns that I'm building for them, and it's a substantial increase in, in size. And I think it's going to be just about perfect for what I want to accomplish with it. So anyway, these are base castings, and um, you know this just. Is we'll go through these fairly quickly just to give you an idea of what I've got. This is the other end base casting. There again, that same perspective of what we've got size-wise. When you start comparing them, this is a fairly large cast. Now I'm going to cast these in aluminum rather than cast iron, and uh, we'll alloy that a little bit. A couple of reasons. One is aluminum is much easier to cast in the home shop, and we'll show as we cast those. But I also think my original castings I did in aluminum, and I think they're plenty strong and stiff, and there's enough weight there. If it was easier to cast cast iron in the home shop, I would cast them in cast iron. But for now, aluminum works really well on this one. I think it's going to work fine here. Um, this is our wheel head. This is the wheel head bracket. When I cast the original, I'll do it with this too. We're hollowed out inside and, and through this casting. So we'll, uh, we'll cast this with a core. So we'll be building a pattern designed for a core and then a core box to build our core. There's our work head. There again, we're five inches long as opposed to probably three, approximately three, whatever that 33% reduction would be. There we've got our tilting bracket and then our rocking lever and uh, ball handles. And there again, this shows both style of ball handles. They've been increased in size. I'll, uh, I'll build them the same way as I built the originals. They'll be uh, probably cut with a form tool. I may CNC them, but I think we'll probably just use a form tool on them. Changes I'll make there, I will probably build them out of stainless steel. I may not. I may just build them out of mild steel and blue them, which is what my original corn was. Those are some of the, some of the drawings that we've got already scaled up. So that hopefully will give you a little bit of perspective of what we're doing on this project. Um, like I say, it's going to be a rather drawn out process, but we're going to do our best to get you a video every week, at least one video every week on it, depending on how fast we progress with it. So hopefully this is a project that will interest you. If it is and you haven't already done so, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you uh, hit the little bell down there, why well, you'll be one of the first to know when I put out a new video. And uh, if you like them, give me a thumbs up. Any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And uh, as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.